Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers, chapter 12. Now, chapter 11, when we go back, we see in chapter 1, I mean, chapter 11, verse 1, the people are complaining. Chapter 4, we see the mixed multitude is causing complaining. We see the children of Israel complaining. And we see that God gave them the quail and God causes uh, death for their lusting. And Miriam and Aaron spank against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman. Whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. So he gets it from the nation, and now he's getting it from his own family, his brother and sister. And the hardball here is he's marrying an Ethiopian woman. Now let's look at Exodus 2, verse 16. Exodus 2, verse 16. And we'll start in verse 16. Verse 15. Now when Pharaoh heard this saying, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. Midian. That's not in Africa. And he sat down by a well. This is about this Dead Sea area. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ru, that's his father-in-law, the future father-in-law of where we are right now, their father, he said, how is it that you are come so soon today? And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flocks. And he said to the stories, where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter, a Gentile bride. And she buried him the son. So here is a woman that is of a man that's of Midian, of the Dead Sea area. Now when we come back over here to Numbers, here's an African woman. Ethiopian. He's married to. This has got to be a second wife. What happened to his first wife? We don't know. When did he marry this woman? We don't know. But isn't that a prophet unto liken unto Moses, Jesus Christ. And both of them have a bride. Do you know what the first man in the book of Acts was saved according to the way the Gentiles are saved today? The Ethiopian eunuch. There he is. Isn't that interesting? And then you get the Italian man, the Italian uh, Cornelius. But the first man is saved by the grace of God, according to the gospel today, was an Ethiopian. So here Moses, when marries outside the children of Israel, and Aaron and Miriam are having a little chat session. And they say, and it's not only the Ethiopian woman, but verse 2, Hath the Lord Indeed, spoken only by Moses. Is Moses the only one God's speaking to? Now they're doing it. Has he not spoken also by, get that word. What's that word there? Us. Who's talking? Miriam and Aaron. 
Miriam's a prophetess. And you see that with Philip's uh, daughters in the book of Acts. Now, a woman's not to assert the authority over the church to be the leader of the church, but she can teach classes, she can prophesy, she can witness to people. And God can speak through her to, to do his work as long as she's not usurping authority, well, right, guess what she's doing right now? She's usurping authority that Paul says that a woman's not to do. I'm better than Moses. God's spoken by us. And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth and the brackets. So verse 3 Verse 4, verse 5, verse 6, God is going to tell us, verse 7, how Moses is, how well Moses is, how good Moses is before God. Moses was like no other man. So don't be a pastor in the church and say, well, don't pick on my family and my wife and all that because God's going to do what he did to marry him. No, you're not good as Moses. There's going to be no prophet like and unto you, preacher. God's already came through Jesus Christ and became like unto Moses. And that one verse there in Psalm, touch not my anointed preachers will use, and I've had them you know, quote it to, to me. That's not you. That's not you. Oh, well, you know, we're not under the law, but then you go in the law and proclaim verses that, you know, protect you and your office. So we get a description of Moses. He's like no other man. And yet he's a sinner. And we see with Moses, anger is, is one of his sins. And the Lord spank suddenly upon Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. Come out. Ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. So it looks like verses one and two, there the three of them are there talking. And it looks like they may be chiding against Moses himself. At least, at least they brought the cause of Moses. They're not like Moses is not in a room and they're talking about him. Because God says to the three of them right there, come out of there. Get out of that room. And the three came out, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud. That cloud that's over the tabernacle, God came down through that cloud. And stood in the door of the tabernacle. That's where that veil is. That's where the people came. And called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. Oh, I bet you they're trembling. Imagine how that cloud and the testimony of all Israel, Moses, Aaron, Miriam, get over here. You know, that's not the words a child wants to hear his mother calling, get over here. And it's in that voice of anger. I grew up with, I mean, there were voices my mom would call my name. I would know it's time for dinner or going somewhere or I better walk very slow. Aaron and, and Miriam are probably right now, they're doing little baby steps. And he said, God, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. The devil's is a television. And will speak unto him in a dream. And that's what Old Testament prophets done. By dreams, by visions. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all my house. Now that's an interesting verse right there. God says, if there's a prophet, I will speak to him. I will show him visions. I will, do, I will show him dreams. But Moses is an exception of a special man. And what we do is we overlook. Let's go to Hebrews 3, verse 1. And we'll see this quoted again in Hebrews 3, 1.
And we see, wherefore the holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Now look at that. That's what we just read in Numbers 12. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, Jesus. Inasmuch as he who had built the house has more honor than the house. That's Jesus. So when we read God has come down and spoken to Mo, uh, Aaron and Miriam in verse uh, verse 7 of verse 12, uh, chapter 12. God is now setting forth Jesus Christ. A prophet likened unto Moses. But in chapter 3 of Hebrews, he's better than Moses. So what God is telling uh, Miriam and Aaron, there is no man ever like Moses. He is better like unto Jesus Christ, and yet Jesus Christ is better than he. Hebrews 3. Verse 4, for every house is built by some man. But he that buildeth all things is God. That's creator. God built that nation we're reading about in, in Numbers, Israel. He took one man and one woman who were barren and unable to have children and built a nation. And that nation just went against Moses. And now God who has made Miriam and, and Aaron, his brothers and sister, now they're going against him. Now watch this. And Moses very was faithful in his house. That's Numbers chapter 12, verse 7. As a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as son over his own house. Whose house are we? That's me. You're to say. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end so when we go back to numbers and we read god speaking about moses it's also speaking about jesus christ the house of moses is the children of israel the house of jesus christ is the church so verse 7 my servant moses is not so who is faithful in all my house with him will i speak Mouth to mouth. That's up on the mount. 40 days, 40 nights. All the times that Moses went and spoke to God. God says, I spoke to him mouth to mouth. That's the one that says, let me see your glory. And his face starts showing. I don't think God ever spoke face to face to, to uh, Abraham. He said, that's a friend of mine. Even apparently, and not in dark speeches. In other words, I'm not going to give Moses parables and riddles. I'm not going to give Moses no mysteries. I'm going to be clear and free with him when I speak to him. And the similitude of the Lord shall be a behold. Wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Why are you blasting him? He doesn't need anybody else to give him a hard time. He just had we chapter uh, 11. He just went into depression because the people were, you're, you two are supposed to support him. You're the high priest, Aaron. You're supposed to help. And the anger of the Lord was kindled, kindled against them. And he departed. God came down, blasted, rebuked. Aaron and Miriam and then took off. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. It disappeared. And behold, Miriam became leprous. White as snow. She's unclean. And Aaron looked upon Miriam. That's what the priest was supposed to do. And behold, he declares she is leprous. That's, that's exactly what Leviticus 13 and 14 says. The priest is supposed to look and she's leprous. And Aaron said to Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us. 
Aaron, why are you blaming Moses? What did Moses have to do with it? So you see, Aaron's doing the same thing the nation's done. Moses, this is your fault. You caused Miriam to have leprosy. You got to feel sorry for Moses. He is again. The earth opened up, it swallowed a, a bunch of people, and it closed itself up. Moses, you killed them. God came down and said, Aaron, Miriam, you are in fault. Miriam has leprosy, and the high priest turned to Moses and said, What'd you do? Wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Well, at least I'll give you one thing for Aaron. He's repenting to the man that he was talking about. But we don't see Miriam speaking. Aaron is is suffer, should be suffering. He's not. But he's watching his sister suffer. It was both of them. But Aaron's also the high priest. Let her not be as one dead. Unclean. Of whose the flesh is half consumed. When he cometh out of his mother's womb. Stillbirth, or a very sick, sickly child that's born, that's not going to survive. Mary, Miriam's days are up. That's what Aaron's saying. She's not going to live long with this leprosy. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, "Heal her now, O God, O God, my sister is dying." That's an old God, OMG. Oh God, I beseech thee. And Moses is not bitter and he's not angry. He's doing right. He's pleading to God. Yeah, they spoke about me. Yeah, they were harassing me. But God, please. It's too much for her. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father, which is Moses and Aaron's father, Amram, remember he's talking to brothers and sisters here in the group. If her father had but spit in her face, that's a shame, disgrace. That's what they did to Jesus, the priests, and the free servants, they spit upon Jesus. Should she not be ashamed seven days? Wow. That's a lot. If a man walks up to his door, poof, seven days, you're ashamed. Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, as you did with a leper. Unclean, unclean. And after that, let her be received in again. So we're not told she's healed. But by letting her back in the camp, shows there's been healing. But it's not stated. And afterward the people removed from Hazarathoth. Well, I'm going to say after the people. Because while she is outside the camp. She is so impressed upon the people. She is so thought of. The camp does not move. They stay right there for the seven days. That's how much she cared about. That's how much she's looked. We're not going anywhere. Seven days she's out of the camp? Yes. Okay, we're not going nowhere. We'll wait for Miriam to her seven days. Let her be ashamed seven days. Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days. And the people journeyed not. See, afterwards, I read verse 16. After the people were... And the people journeyed not in Mer till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people, they waited for Miriam to be able to come back into that camp before they moved on. Implying the, maybe the fact is that people in the wilderness, if they got leprosy, 
They were put out of the camp and it looks like they may have been left behind. And maybe only, almost like the rapture of the church and those that are not of God are left behind. But Miriam, they waited. Again, it doesn't say she was healed, but the implication is that she can come back into camp again. There's no sacrifice listed. There's, there's no checking her out. It just says after seven days. And the people journeyed not to Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people removed from Hazara and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. So we get this little... We're hungry, but we're sick and tired as bread. And then we get brothers and sisters arguing. And God steps down and we get leprosy. And then we get moving along. And Moses gets blamed with the most blamable things that he has no control of. And Moses has an anger issue. But with his brother and sister fighting him about a wife, it's like, I don't care. Oh, she got leprosy? She's something wrong with her? Lord God, you please heal her. You take care of her, please, Lord. This is a very special man that God says, I will speak face to face. And he did. And I wonder if Moses was able to watch God right on those stones. Moses, when he dies, an angel came down, Michael came down and grabbed that body, a body snatcher. And the devils came down and said, hey, you can't do that. And God told Moses, you cannot go in that promised land. That's it. But many years later, he shows up. With Jesus Christ. And Elijah. Another man who never had death. Moses died. Elijah didn't die. And both these uh, Moses and Elijah. These special men. Are going to show up. In the tribulation period. Where there's a mark. And there's the beast. Moses is going to die again. Elijah, Elijah, who never dies, is going to die. And then they're going to have Christmas with Mary and giving him gifts because they're dead. We talk about the, the first and second coming of Jesus Christ, which is, well, yeah, he, he came, he's coming again. But we don't talk about the second coming of Moses. And Moses and Elijah, now get, let's get this, let's look at this now. Elijah was raptured with, the, with the, the horses of fire, the chariots of fire. Moses died. They're coming back with Jesus at the mountain transfiguration. And then they go, boom. They show up in the tribulation period. Elijah, who's never died, is going to die. Moses, who died, is going to die again. Moses, who was never raptured, but Elijah was raptured. Both Moses and Elijah are going to be raptured again for Elijah in the tribulation period. There has been no man like Moses who's going through a full life. I don't know what Moses is thinking about right now and where he is. I don't know if he knows he's going to be in the tribulation period. But if he does, and when Moses shows up, Let's look at him in Israel here. When he shows up the tribulation period, no one's going to like him. Like no one likes him here. The only ones you ever see that really stand up for him is Joshua. Joshua, Jehovah saves. Everybody else is blaming him for everything. You know what they're going to be in the, doing in the tribulation period? When Moses says and has a contest with Elijah. Hey, very good, Elijah. Three years, no rain. That's great. Watch this. Turn that water into blood. And the Bible records in the book of Revelation, they are angry with him. Not God. They're angry with him and they're angry with Elijah. Exactly what's going on. 
Moses has a miserable life when it comes to the people. But with God, God says, I love him. And he's a special person. And he's beyond any person and any prophet ever. And like in Jesus Christ. And we see in Hebrews chapter 3, the power of Jesus Christ over our house. Moses is special. And we're going to see Moses one day. And we're going to be with Moses one day in front of Jesus Christ. A lot of these people that Moses is with right now, he won't see them again. 